What's up, Madden 20 fans? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This YouTube channel is devoted to uh, helping you get better at Madden 20 through uh, just different film studies, different play breakdowns, different content that I produce. Again, it's not that I know everything, but it's to take some of the things that I know and some of the things that I learn along the way and help you in Madden 20. Today, what we're going to be doing is... Um, continuing our air raid series and we're going to be talking about practical application of the mesh series so um, if you haven't watched the last two videos that i've produced i would encourage you to go watch them the one that i would really encourage you to watch is the one on the mesh and the one on the drive there's two extensive breakdowns on those two uh, plays and what I would encourage you to do, go back, watch those, take some notes on why I do what I do, uh, and try to basically start practicing the mesh concept. What we're going to do today is we're going to spend just a little bit of time talking about the practical application of the mesh series in a live game. So we're going to do a live breakdown, and the only two plays that I'm going to run are drive and mesh. And the reason that I'm doing this is to try and help you give you as much footage as I can so that you can be more effective when you use this in your own personal game uh, play. So for the setups and the uh, basics as to why I run what I run, you can check those uh, previous videos out, and I believe they would really will make a big difference. Defensively, um, I'm just running the standard... Um, 3-4 Bear. Uh, this is. I'm going to be doing some content on defense as well soon, uh, talking a little bit about defense and kind of my approach this year. It's different than it's ever been, uh, for sure. Uh, the game plays a lot differently than it's ever played um, from a perspective of how effective running the ball is this year. And I just really believe that what I want to do defensively is to try to play a bend but don't bring style and to try to control the field. Uh, I talk a lot about field coverage and what that means um, from a defensive perspective. It's basically trying to keep everything in front of me and then at the right time um, getting aggressive. So here, um, the first drive is basically just a fill-you-out drive. 3-4 Bear uh, is primarily a run defense, and this year, more than any other year that I've ever played Madden, I find myself switching formations based on what the offense comes out in. So if the offense comes out in a pass-happy play or a pass-happy formation, you'll see what I do is I shift to this dimes package here. Uh, you'll see that right here. Award... Um, so here they're coming out in the, a pass-happy package. And here, this is kind of a make or break down. So I'm going to the uh, seven-man pressure out of the dime. I think we're going to get a good wrap tackle and get off the field. So defensively, that's kind of... Defense is just a whole different ball game this year. But offensively, now we're into it. So spread, rifle, spread Y flex from the Arizona Cardinals offensive playbook. You want to sub McCole Harmon in, and then you want to have Tyreek Hill... Again, the only two plays that I'm going to run, with the exception of maybe um, maybe a draw, is the drive and the mesh play. Those are the only two plays I'm going to run. So we're going to start out with our power play. That's the mesh play. That's the play that we really want to make our money on. Here he's showing a blitz. And so when you see a heavy pressure look like this, what we're going to do is we're going to block the running back, and we're going to slide protect to the backside um, and see what we can do here. So here it comes out. Cover zero. I had him wide open. I just did not throw it quick enough. And we'll go right back to the play. If they run heavy press coverage like this, um, I really like the drive play. So here, he, his strategy is just going to be to blitz and blitz and blitz and blitz. I think I actually just recently got a comment about that. What do you do when the defense wants to blitz? What I like to do is... Um, Try to pick up the pressure as best I can, block six. And then from there, knowing he's going to cover zero, um, here he uses. And so I quickly check because he's using that corner route, so I quickly check to the, to the other route. The other thing that I want to encourage you to do is when you're running this offense, to make sure that you're running it no huddle. And the reason that we want to do that, uh, the reason we want to run it no huddle, 
and here you see he's probably checked out of his blitz. Probably checked out of his blitz because of the fact that those middle linebackers aren't there. If the middle linebackers do come, we're still going to be able to hit it. But the thing that I'm probably looking at, if he uses the right side on the corner route, then I'm going to look to that out route. We'll see what we got here. So look to the right first. Um, here he gets a really good play by J.J. Watt. I had that drag wide open. But you see there, if you beat the blitz enough, they'll eventually stop doing it. So here he's showing blitz, and he's showing blitz here. So this is a cover zero look. And so what I'm going to do um, is take Tyreek Hill, motion across. There he goes, cover two, hard flat, and you see the power of that route. Now, I'm not going to lie in the red zone. The mesh play is not the best play, but it's still very effective. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. He goes hard flats again. We get him right in the back corner of the end zone, and we're on the board. I'll go for two every time, too, just to show you some more reps. The trick with this play is to rep it like crazy. Um, Mike Leach, Hal Mummy, all those guys will all tell you. Cliff Kingsbury, everyone will tell you. The trick to running the mesh is to rep it every single day. Most air raid teams will drill this play once a practice. Um, at the very beginning, they have a 10-minute drill called the Settle Up a Noose Drill, which basically drills everything about this play. That running back route right there in the back of the end zone, I find myself, if I'm in the red zone, it just stops in the back right there, and most of the time they'll just ignore it. Gets in a nice little tender spot, um, and so you can easily hit that. Again, most of the time you want to be doing possession catches um, just to make sure they catch the ball. This year the possession catch is probably the best way to do it. Um, but anyway, so here defensively I'm going to set up kind of my um, my formation here because he's actually throwing the ball a little bit more. So here we're going with a little three man off that right edge. There it is. That might be one of the best catches I've ever seen. So defensively, what I have, what I tend to do, is I'll run uh, cover two uh, till the cows come home because I just think it's the hardest one to beat. Um, it's the one I struggle with the most. It's the one that most teams struggle with the most because it basically stops the corner routes. And then if the corner routes are contained, then all you have to worry about is the drags and the crossing routes. Um, and if you don't press coverage out of, the, out of a Tampa 2, what happens is um, you might get hit with quick outs but and quick drags, but you won't get... Um, oh, that was my play right there. Threw right at my lane. Um, you won't get those beat, those like deep streaks that will beat you. If you don't press, they won't miss the press. And so it's just a nice little play, especially if they run those delayed streaks. They're just not going to be open. Comebacks aren't open. Corner routes aren't open. That's kind of what you get when you don't bump. Um, and so I really like just letting it sit, going... Um, and I always play over top coverage when I'm going to cover two. So that's the really the core look there. It's a three-man pressure off that left side. We could actually put Chris Jones into a zone if we wanted to. But what that defense right there forces my opponent to do is it forces him to take the underneath, take the underneath, take the underneath, take the underneath. And then when we get down in the, into this kind of area, the red zone, what will happen is you'll start to clamp down a little bit. And so what I tend to do is I tend to um, get a lot of stops in the red zone because it's just hard to score um, once they hit that 10-yard line. So you're just kind of keeping them. They trickle in, trickle in, trickle in. And if they try to force anything, you're going to, you know, it's that Ben but Dope Brink style of defense. And that's kind of what I tend to go with. <sighs> But when he comes back in on a passing set, then I'll shift back to my pass defense. If he comes in a running set, then I'll shift to um, that 3-4 that bear. And there's the pressure, but I didn't have the user. Well, he's got a good offense. He's got his reads down for sure.
Going gun bunch. And I should have been able to get a pick there, but I accidentally hit X instead of Y. So same thing here. So my, my goal right here is just to take this left side and just lurk it. There it is. And you see it just forces them to, it forces them to get you some more reps here. But it forces them to force things. Um, the more, that's like a pretty much tailor-made defensive drive. And you see I just very simply stayed in that cover two, cover two, cover two, cover two. The reason you want to do it like that, or the reason that I do it like that, is because it sets the tone uh, and it forces the offense to adjust to you versus you adjusting the offense. So here you got four down linemen. Looks like nickel cover two. Um, we'll see what happens here. Yep, cover two, and there's that crosser. Um, on one of my videos, I got feedback that they don't like how the drags get bumped in cover two. Uh, I don't like that either. Um, oh, dang it. That sucks. That's what I talk about, about not throwing those till they sit. I got a little bit carried away there. Um, if you want to avoid that bump from the crossing routes, all you have to do is call it from a bunch. Um, if they don't base align um, or man align, so like if they're base aligned and those linebackers are in the box, you're not going to have to worry about that at all. Um, so there's that run left. And like I said, you know, the defensive side will we'll get after it here and try to hold them to three, but it's essentially Madden is very much so a possessions game. And so the more it's not necessarily about how many points you score, it's about how many possessions you are up. So if you're up one possession versus two possessions versus three possessions. So if you're if you're um, a good defensive player in Madden, what you'll do is you'll hold them to three. And if you can hold them to three, um, what happens is you uh, constantly win that possession battle. Mm -hmm. So here, tight offset. And we got him. So here you want to, again, it's a possession game, so you want to conserve your timeouts. Make sure that you have every opportunity to score. And here we're just going to go max coverage. And got a nice little pick there. Again, forcing it. Keeping them from forcing it is critical to defensive success this year. Um, it's not necessarily about shutting them out, and I, I've not been able to do that. Um, I found a lot more success, and maybe it's just my style is a little different. So here he's showing pretty heavy pressure, and so to combat that, what I'm going to do is go with the drive play. Actually, what I'm going to do is go... Ah, we'll just go drive. And there's Tyreek Hill doing Tyreek Hill things. Here we're going to quick snap him out of a no huddle because I knew he was going to go back to that cover zero man. And there you see what that corner route can do. You don't always have, if they're off coverage, if they're not pressed, you don't have to motion him and he'll be just as effective. But there we get back on the board with a, get a big score at the end of the half. And looks like he's going to go ahead and quit out. So... Again, that was the mesh play uh, ran, and we will do some more uh, videos for you as well, but just wanted to get this out, give you some practical feedback um, and practical advice for how to run the mesh in a real game. Thank you, guys, and if this content is helpful, I want to encourage you to subscribe to